numpad 1 1 to start, numpad 1 1 to stop, and 1 1 to restart. We've got recording on, so I don't need to worry about taking screenshots. The course is already set. I've got my notes up. Yeah, the orange elements tend to stand out. They don't even look that great currently because I'm in a really orange station, so they don't stand out, but they will in a second. So I'm going to begin a countdown. I will launch at 16.53, so in 40 seconds. And this is a race, it's a scramble race, so you have to construct your own your own course that passes through six waypoints and they've been chosen to be stations that aren't around planets so you can't use planetary breaking and this one is constructed around white dwarfs and I'm going to begin in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, launch and we're going to resume navigation. I should be able to do the first thing in one jump. The races are asymmetric. You record your times and then compare. Uh, so that's the time I'm trying to beat. 39 minutes 28 seconds. That's the current top time for the top fuel class, which is completely unlimited. Any ship, any engineer mods, anything you can possibly do to go faster or farther. So I'm currently flying on Aspect Spider. This might not actually be a bad ship for you to aim for. It's a really it's about a middle of the game um, all around ship. You should be able to get it in less than 100 hours of play, maybe somewhere between 20 and 40, I think, depending upon how hard you burn for money. Um, now we're coming up on a white dwarf. You can see it in the middle of the screen. It's kind of cool. They added that in the last patch. It used to be... Okay, so here's the tricky part. Sorry, I'm spazzing out a bit. Okay, so those are the jets. And because we're stupid, we're going to fly through those jets while trying to avoid... Okay, sweet, and our frame shift drive is boosted. So that was a white dwarf, which has giant jets of electromagnetic energy coming out the top and the bottom. And flying through them is dangerous. It allows you to boost your frame shift drive so you can jump further on the next leg. And I actually didn't need to do that on this one, but I forgot, because I'm flying a different ship than previously. Um, and my current ship has greater range, so I didn't need to do that on the first leg. Yeah, it's really terrifying. I've died like three times to those things because you just get thrown around and it's okay as long as you stay in super cruise, but you're getting really close to the white dwarf. So if you get trapped in its gravity well, you get yanked out of super cruise. And so you're trying to charge up your frame shift drive to get back in, to get out of the jet. And the entire time your ship is taking damage and your frame shift drive is malfunctioning and it's it's terrifying, and then you die. Um, I think you can get out of it if you drop out, but it's it's very difficult. Um, I don't think they have pulsars per se. I would have to check. So they've got white dwarfs and neutron stars, and that was what they updated in 2.2. Um, that was one of the big things, because they used to just be like white stars, and they added those giant jets coming out of the side. So I suspect they're trying to update pulsars, I'm trying to remember if a pulsar is different from a neutron star that just orbits really fast. Um, but they definitely don't have pulsars that are orbiting at like multiple times a second yet. That is not in the game. And that'll be really cool. I'm sure that's on their list. So this is... How do they distribute? So they aren't new stars. The white dwarfs and neutron stars were in the game. They just updated the graphics for them. So I don't think stars that are in the game are, are generally changed at all. So if, say, we know of pulsars in the Milky Way galaxy, uh, they are already in the game. They just don't have any sort of special skin, probably typical neutron stars. 
Because you'd have to ask Andrea, but I think that pulsars are just neutron stars that spin really fast, so they have giant jets coming out the side. Yeah, there you go. So yes, they they might actually have pulsars. Now this is an odd race. That's what I'm doing. Oh gosh, that hurt. Okay. Normally you would dock, but that is part of this race. All you have to do is get close enough to the station that you can see the station's name, and then you fly away from it. So it's a bit faster than the normal race, and it doesn't involve docking, which is very Friendship difficult. Drive, but that does mean I had to use larger shields than I normally would, because I am literally smashing into the paint on the station. Yeah, so there should be pulsars in the game, um, in that case. I'm not sure what the nearest pulsar to Earth is. I was under the impression they were not that close, but they were to be bathed in radiation, uh, which would tend to be a bummer. Um, although, of course, there are the really interesting theories about, like, you need to have enough variation in radiation to sustain mutations so that life can evolve rather than just settling into something static, uh, which is always a fun theory to talk about. Here's another one. This one I'm going to avoid because the next jump is not so far that I need that boost. And going into those magnetic plumes is just a bad idea if you don't have to. And not only that, it uh, it hurts your frame shift drive. So I, if I go over here and look at my frame shift drive, you can see its health is 99% instead of the 100% it should be. The white dwarfs only give you a 50% boost, and so they only take 1% off your drive. If you go to neutron stars, they give you a 300% boost. And I think they correspondingly damage your drive 2 or 3% instead of 1%. So it's cool for explorers, but they also have to worry about their drive dying while they're out there because they can't repair at stations. Um, they can bring along a unit, though, that can repair their frame shift drive. And if you bring along two of those units, they can repair themselves. So you can stay out indefinitely and then land on planets to refuel those repair modules which is, yeah, getting to be some advanced stuff. But those explorers could theoretically stay out there forever as long as they're careful enough. The only thing you can't repair is your hull. So if your hull gets messed up, it's no, no way. And your power plant, because you can't power the repair drives when you're repairing the power plant. People have been asking to get a second power plant for that, but I don't think they're close to implementing that at all which would be at least a bit amusing. Okay, so here's our second waypoint, Levy Mont Montalcini Terminal. And we're hitting it. Okay. These are also tricky because they're in the middle of space. You can drop onto them from a higher distance, so rather than one megameter, it can be like ten megameters. So the whole approach is very different. From so once again, I'm heading for the front of the station. I'm going to try and bump the paint. The technical requirement is I have to have the station name in view. So that is close enough, and now we pull up and boost away, and while I'm boosting away, I'm floating and I will select the next station in line. I use bookmarks for all these races, because that way I don't have to find systems in the middle of a race. The bookmarks really helped out with racing. Uh, there was one a few months ago called the Bucky Bubble because we're the Buckyball racers, and the Buckyball had 60 points, so you had to fly between 60 systems, which meant that the bookmarks this got rather a bit confusing, and I actually still have all those bookmarks, because it took me so many hours to make them that I just don't want to delete them. I really need to get rid of them, though they're clogging up the bookmarks. Coming up on another white dwarf, looking at my spreadsheet, I do not need to boost from this one either, so we're going to avoid the giant planes. And we're on course for 8 minutes, which seems to be a fairly decent time. I'm wondering if the other guys in the race have figured out that you don't need to boost on all the plumes, because especially, uh, a lot of them are using a smaller ship called an Imperial Curve, which 
is faster in normal speed. It can get up to 777 meters per second, um, but it can't jump as far. So I think by eliminating the number of jumps, I'll be able to compensate for that faster speed. It's much smaller and more nimble. It, that also means it has a smaller fuel tank though, so it can't go as many jumps. So when I was trying that, I had to stop and scoop a lot. They figure out a set of waypoints you need to touch. Correct. So the races tend to differ, um, but a, a very common one is what we call a scramble race, which is here are six waypoints. You start at this station, you need to touch all six, and you need to get back to that station. And there's no set order. Um, now, the problem is, so it's basically a very simple traveling salesman problem. Um, and I actually figured out how to solve traveling salesman problems in Excel in order to do it, which was kind of fun. The good thing, bad thing, was that then I figured out one of the other racers had actually written a Python program to optimize it. So I now just load the race into Python and it optimizes it for me. So that does take some of the fun out of it because you don't get to play with the spreadsheet as much, but it does save you a lot of time. Um, one thing I never did that for was the 60 point race because there was an optional, there was a set route and then there was one class where it was like you can ignore the route if you want and I just took the route because I think that computing a 60 person traveling salesman problem would just be insane no matter what sort of rig you have. Yeah it is Python. I had to figure out how to load Python and do it and I still don't really have a clue what's going on but uh, I can make it work. Yeah, using the Excel spreadsheet for the traveling salesman was really interesting because you can set it to different modes like evolutionary solving and stuff. And I usually had it run for about 20 seconds and that would get you an optimal result for like a nine point problem. But since it's exponential, I don't even know how long you would have to run it for a 60 point problem. <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll get right on that. They'll probably loan me my their super cluster right away. I don't think, well I know that Liz, my wife, does some NCMP. I think it might be very hard to get, I wonder if Python even runs on their supercomputer. I would assume it would, but I don't know if the parallelization is there. Plus it's like an app written by an amateur programmer, so I doubt it's optimized at all. It usually takes a few rounds of debugging on the forums to get it to run for any one person. You know, MCMP? Are you an Iranian trying to steal our nuclear secrets? <laughs> and this is one of the places where I died last time, so I'm going to pull up the system map. So you come in on this thing, which is, if I recall, a class O star giant. And then there's a white dwarf over here. And I th on the other ship, I had to boost off this white dwarf, so I'd come in at the big star go to the white dwarf, get a boost, and then go land at the station. Since I've got my ship with the increased jump range, I can skip that white dwarf boost and not die. Oh, plasma physics. Okay. Do they, they model plasma via particles? I guess that's not surprising. Like, oh, physicists seem to try and use MCMP, or a lot of them. Enjoy the laundry. I need to change lace at some point. I think I will wait until after, after the race there. Okay, avoiding the giant plumes of death. And coming in on Stone's legacy. If I keep it in the corner, I can actually enter kind of a helix of helix spiral approach, which tends to work somewhat well, especially if I'm coming in too fast. Since it's down to two seconds, I'm kind of needing to pull around it. NPC for ion acceleration stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, apparently it is written in a very obfuscated sort of language on the old punch cards, and they deliberately don't update it, so it's hard to get the North Koreans and the Iranians to come and pick their weapons. This is, sort of. this is a bummer because I came out facing away from the station, so I'm going to need to go around to the front, give it a love tap, and then bump off. And at the next system, I will need to boost, so I'll be dipping back into the white dwarfs again. Yeah, it's 
it's apparently a giant pain to troubleshoot. It's just got this equivalent to a punch card written in a, a notepad file. And there's no debugging, there's no error code. It's just, oh, this didn't run. Oh, great, thanks. Thanks so much. Okay, so we got close. We got our main. Ah, uh, yeah, that makes sense that it was export controls. Select the next system en route. Short jump. I've still got more than half of my fuel tank. So if I continue doing this in the future, I might actually spring for a small fuel tank. I don't think that'll optimize it very much, though. Yeah, that's a big worry at the lab. They apparently are always increasing security protocols. Um, so that... Because they have the chance of that to have delivery. So there's always more additional security, uh, changing passwords, longer passwords, two factor authentication, etc. Okay, now here, I think I get a scoopable star. Because notice it's not a white dwarf in the middle of my screen. It's so nice to have that. Okay. I don't need to worry about scooping that because I've simply got so much fuel. I do need to worry about getting a boost, so I'm going to need to go to the white dwarf that's on the side of the system, hop in, try really hard not to die. So that white dwarf is going to be Procyon B over there. We're going to head straight towards it because my next jump... Oh, and I can actually... Let's see. Get shareable link. Yes. Huh. So if anybody wants to see what I'm doing, Day of Dead Stars. Uh, the galaxy map in this game is real as much as it can be. So what they did was they imported a bunch of star data from different sources. Um, one of the things you run into is that different star catalogs have different names for the same stars, so they could only choose one name. Um, so sometimes you'll be looking for a name and you can't find it, and you need to go to a star catalog and find out its alternate name, and that's the name it is in the Elite Universe. But they imported as much real data as they could. Um, and then they procedurally generated the rest, but it's not random. Like, they they looked at the density of stars in different parts of the galaxy, and it'll change. So if you go towards the center of the galaxy, towards Sagittarius A, you'll just get thousands and thousands of neutron stars. And you can make a bunch of exploration money, because finding neutron stars is uh, worth 20 times as much as a regular star out there. But... You can go visit Bernard's star, Betelgeuse, and any any star you are familiar with, any constellation, you can go visit, uh, as long as it's not permit controlled. And the vast majority of systems aren't. Sol is one of the only big ones that's permit controlled. I guess Sirius is too. Um, I'm trying to think of other famous permits. But like you can go visit the Pleiades Nebula, and there have been a bunch of uh, supposed alien contacts out there, which is kind of neat to follow if you follow the in-game lore. There's a bunch of unknown artifacts, and we're not sure if it's the Thargoids coming back or some other alien civilization. But clearly somebody is messing stuff up in the Pleiades, and the Empire and Federation have sent out multiple capital ships to uh, guard the alien relics for science. Second, I'll let a bit more light see if that improves my camera at all. Now, as we come closer into the gravity well of this white dwarf, I'm actually going to be slowing down. So the seconds timer on the middle of the screen is going to tick down. Dropped frames. Dropped frames. That is good to know. Do you know if that's... Oh, so my CPU use is at 100%. So I should look into overclocking it. 
so that I can reduce that frame drop issue because I got an overclockable one but haven't had to yet. I am running at 1440p so that might have some effect on it. Okay. Here comes the delicate issue. station is four on my list of eight stops so I'm about on time hopefully hey Sarnas what's up this is not space trucking I'm sorry it is more stressful just space racing but I would highly recommend Elite Dangerous as a space trucking game especially since it has no cars so a fear of cars should not matter One thing, I'm going to actually dip below the plane of the ecliptic so that I avoid any other planets, which could slow me down on my way to the station. It is kind of space truck racing. Uh, the next time I get a chance to, so after my next leg, I will pop out and you'll be able to see my ship. It is, it is an ugly ship. I love it, but it's just kind of a giant uh, polygon that was slapped together. It's it's technically a freighter. I really think it's this game's version of the like YT-1300 freighter that's the Millennium Falcon, because it, it does a great job at smuggling, but it is not pretty. It is not well designed, it is not sleek, but it gets the job done. Okay. Coming in five seconds, four seconds. We're gonna hope that we. Oh, so this is gonna be a tricky one. Um, all the previous stations I've been at have been large, large starports, so it's been easy to find their name. The problem is, you can see on my HUD in the lower left, this is just an outpost, so finding the name will be tricky. If I recall, the name on this station was underneath the advertisement for Lacon Space Wings. So I need to find the Lacon ad, which should be a holographic screen. And if I recall, it's right down there. Please be it. Yeah, it's got that little docking thing there, and I think the name is right above that. So we're on a good track to have a decent time. Yes, there's the name. And we're less than a kilometer away. So now I'm just used to wait for the call and go to my map, plot route to the next place. I can still manage it in one jump. And I don't have to worry about long plotting things, which makes me super happy. In my smaller ship I was having to two jump anything. Hey Mars, what's up? Hope the launch is treating you well. Okay, at 22 minutes, we're a bit Oh gosh, a bit faster. Yeah, hitting hitting that 39 is gonna be hard. But I should be able to beat my 45 minutes, which was my last time, so I'll be much better. Those should just be to Twitch and no What's a much farther jump distance? Oh sweet, you got the eagle? I love the eagle. Because I stayed in the sidewinder for a very long time longer than I should have. Um, oh gosh, this is tricky. Okay, so I'm going to be flying towards this plane. Yeah, the reason I have this ship is because of the jump distance. It is the second longest jump distance of any ship in the game, and I'm running it completely empty. Like, no cargo bay, no guns, um, no point defense. Okay, I got that boost, and now 
we're gonna head out into the station. Please get me out of the plume, get me out of the plume without dying. <sighs> okay. Yeah, let me know what you think of the eagle. So, because you weren't in the Sidewinder that long and didn't try combat, it might not be as big of an upgrade, but the eagle is the most nimble ship in the game, so it can just be a joy to fly. And I think you can mount three small guns on it, so it can start to pack a decent punch. And yeah, the jump distance does get ridiculous. I think if I check it out, yeah, my boosted jump distance is up to 70 light years. Uh, my normal jump distance on this is around 45, because that white dwarf gives me a 50% increase. Um, the Anaconda, I know if you like stack the right boosts, can currently get up to around 200. Yeah, the two pulse lasers and one multi cannon should be a good combo. I think, and I didn't test this, but I think that shouldn't overwhelm your distributor too much. So you should be able to leave them on most of the time and not need to worry about uh, running out of weapons power. If you did three pulse lasers, I'm almost positive you would run out of weapons power. So that's why I would recommend at least one multi cannon. If you find yourself running out of power too much, you might switch to two multi cannons. Which will, of course, make it somewhat harder to take down shields, but you do get the benefit of daka 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 daka. That sounds good. Cool. 105% power. Oh, overall? Okay. So, have you tried turning off your cargo bay? Because if you turn off your cargo hatch, um, that will frequently take you. Oh, I missed it. I missed it so close. Now I have to circle around again. And this is a legit loop of shame. I should have got it the first time. And there we go. So very good shot. Nice. Now you might want to set up, I don't know if you have enough power. I would put that FSD at the two. Or go base. I don't know if that will help you, but it is possible. And you can't set up a group 3 without a group 2. It's one of the stranger nuances of the power system. There is our tag. And now we're up to boosting away the system. So you have to set the FSD to 2, and then you can set something else to 3. And you can technically go up to 5. Five is the max number of groups, and I do have that on some Great ships, ship like specifically combat ships or advanced mining ships, um, because not only do you want that power to change when you deploy your guns and not, but you can also change it so if people shoot out your power plant and you go to half power, if you have your power settings right, you'll still have thrusters, and you can still so that can be useful. thrusters up before your guns and shields, because having guns and shields without thrusters is not helpful. Okay, I don't actually need to boost here if I'm heading to Siliev, so I'm not going to go back and do that, because that would be a waste of time. Day on 4, FSD on 3, yeah, that would work great. And if you're in a fighter, you'll probably almost never be using your cargo bag. Yeah, no, it's, it's perfectly fine. And then it should you should get the little bar at the bottom of the screen, like you see over here, showing you I've got one, two, and my fuel scoop is on five. I guess I could put that down at three. And come in and see the vision. And I'm going to see if I can dock in a more reasonable way this time. Oh. 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 Oh.
go. I might not worry about the FSS as much. Since you'll probably be fighting in more than the trade. I mean, you want an FSD that's big enough that you don't get stuck like you were in the Sidewinder. But upgrading your power plant is cool. Upgrading your shields and thrusters are the other things that tend to be very important for ships. You want max shields and thrusters eventually. Okay, we're heading to our last station. And this is going to be the only part of the flight where I need to be we are at 29 minutes, so if I can do the next two stops in 10 minutes, I can take first place. Starter shield with a class C is very nice. Um, you can also yep. Yep. you can also get shield boosters that you can place in your optional slots? Utility slots. You've got utility slots and you could place a booster in that or a kill warrant scanner. If you're going bounty hunting, the kill warrant scanner will help you make extra money. And I'm pretty sure I don't need to bother stopping to scoop. So I'm going to head straight away from the star so that I can make sure it's not blocked by the time the FSD is finished pulling down. Boom. There we go. Yeah, I love, I love Coriolis for making builds. It's not as useful once you start getting engineer parts, because it doesn't take into account what those engineer modifications can be. Although the engineers have been out for six months and I haven't seen anything on Coriolis that's talked about that yet. Um, so that's kind of fun. Okay, this white dwarf. We do need to boost. Holy cow, it's right next to us. And we go through and that wasn't enough. There, we do have the boost, so we want to get out of it and head to the station. Yeah, the utility slot, you want to put a shield booster in or a kill warrant scanner. Yeah, that was the last boost I have to do. Nice view of the Milky Way in front of us though. Can we line it up. And if I'm not racing, I usually turn off those orbital lines because I think they mar the view. But they are they are really helpful in racing, so sadly I have to leave them on. Um, yeah, and the the Asp is great for exploring. I'm currently flying the Asp Explorer, and I don't have my head tracker on right now. But maybe sometime later I'll put it on, and you can look around at the cockpit and it's just glass all the way around. You're in like a bubble, like you sometimes see at the front of a helicopter. So you have almost a pure 180 degree view all around you, with just the ship behind you. What was I talking about? Yeah, so have you have you done any combat in the Eagle yet? Because bounty hunting in a, an R, REZ zone can be the easiest, because you'll have the cops there, and they'll help you out if you get into too much trouble fighting pirates. Okay, last one. And this again is one of those stupid outposts. Yeah, I am running a photo. So I've got the T Flight uh, Echo. I've got the Thrustmaster T Flight. Um, so it's $40 to $50 on Amazon. And I've been using it for over a year. And I really recommend it. There it is. Yes. This is perfect. Okay, so there's that dock. I'm going to need to get close enough to see the station name. There it is. And then we pull up right over. Yeah, so if anybody gets a T-Flight, it is an awesome $40 to $50 investment. If you really like games, it's worth it. You might play the game for a few weeks and just stream it out on it first. But um, I also have a set of bindings that I borrowed from somebody on the forum and then modified. I think it works really well. I've, it takes a while to learn because I've got three mod keys that so control ship, but I don't have to touch it. Okay, cool. Well, if you want help in an RES sometime, uh, I don't have that much game time. If it's on, if I'm on, I'll, I'll 
trying to look at. And you're definitely looking for an REZ. It's great. You want to make sure you go for a low one, not a high or a hazardous. Because they did update the game's AI a few months ago, and the game's AI is brutal and will will murder you happily. Okay, we've got six, five and a half minutes to get to Avogadro Enterprise and dock. And I think we can do it. It's 8,000 light seconds away. I'm guessing that'll take four-ish minutes to travel to, but thankfully it's out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, I can actually, um, so here is the ship I'm flying. It's in the dark, unfortunately, so you can't see it very well at all, but it is just kind of a giant box. Wow, you can't see anything. Okay, well, my apologies. Sometimes we'll look at it somewhere where there's more light. What it does have... Oh, bounty work? So you can take missions. I would not recommend taking missions. I would recommend looking for what's called the resource extraction zone. You find that in rings around a planet, and that's where people mine, including NPCs. And there are also NPC pirates there. So the advantage of this is it does have these two giant thrusters on the back are gorgeous. And you can get a sense for the scale of the thing by looking at that's a tiny human sized door. So even a medium sized ship like this is very, very large. So you're looking for resource extraction zones, which are found in rings around planets. You're looking for ones that are labeled low. That means that they will not have giant ships that will slaughter you, and they should also have a high police presence. Um, and those police will tend to help you out. In fact, if you're just starting combat, one tactic is to find a police, they're called system security, and you follow them around, and when they start attacking a ship, you attack the ship with them. Be very careful not to attack the police, that is a capital crime, and they will slaughter you very quickly. But you can just look for the wanted tag, and as long as you're shooting ships with the wanted tag, you will get bounties, and the police will help you out. Now those bounties aren't money immediately. You have to go to a station and then turn them in. So if you die while well, you have a bunch of bounties, you lose them all, which is a big bummer. So every half hour or hour when I'm doing that, I'll go to the station and turn them in to essentially lock in my winnings or collections. Anytime. Happy to know that. Okay, we've got a little under three minutes. Okay, we're coming in too fast. We're gonna move around again. Oh, come on. Okay. And this time we should be okay. Trying to come in on it. Oh, slow down, slow down, slow down. Why are we not? There's our safe disengage. We have 2 minutes 14 seconds to dock. We got pocket pad 33. I don't think that's one of the ones in the front. Okay, I've got my flight assist off. I'm going to turn it on. And coming in to line up the flight assist. It's famous for not breaking very well. I've got big enough thrusters on it. It doesn't make a huge difference, as I was expecting. 30 miles in the back of the pad. And 38 or 5. We have a minute and 20 seconds to spare. So I'm happy You're with that. Welcome Take my screenshot, and stop recording. Okay, so that should be good enough to get into first place. Yeah, well, first place for now. Um, one of the guys in the thread, let me see what he posted. 
he he came up with the time and was like, oh, that's that's just a bookmark. I'll do better. So that's the fun part is it goes till Sunday evening. <laughs> oh, I need to show you videos of some of my landings. Um, one of the really pro ones, and I'll find it on YouTube, was taking a eagle in, which is really fast, and zooming it in fast enough that it hits the control tower and bounces backwards perfectly into the landing spot. I right, stop the timer and save it. Okay, so I stopped the timer. I don't know if it saved it. I can I can do that later. I really like that. I normally have been using my phone timer, and that's kind of a pain. I wonder if I could hot sync it to a key on my HOTUS, but that might not work well. I might not have a uh, a button for for that. Could work well that. Okay. So I'm, I'm glad I switched to this ship. This ran seven minutes faster than that previous ship. Um, right, right. It's just I might not have a free key combo easily to do it on the HOTUS, and I don't know if it'll support multiple keys. Um, although I do have a couple keys on the bottom that I don't use very often that are on the base. So I might, I might put it to one of those. Find it to the fire gun you don't have because you dropped it from the loadout. <laughs> yes, that that would actually work. And um, I do use the trigger, both to fire guns and to hit launch. So if I could sync it to the launch key, that would work. I don't know if I use that for anything else. No, I do use that during the race because like when I go to request docking, I use the trigger to hit enter. So unfortunately, I would be hitting it all the time. But I, I do like that idea. Um, unfortunately, I can't think of a single button on my HOTUS that I don't use, even during racing. And you use a bunch more during combat and stuff. It'll be really exciting to uh, get into some of that with Mars. But I think I am done for now. I am going to check and see where all my ships are. I was thinking of bringing the Vulture next time to play with Mars if he's going to do combat. Although if he's doing space trucking, I might bring the cutter. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. It's been fun. I will see you again sometime. And thanks so much Mars for hosting. Uh, it was great to get some chatter in the stream. I'll talk to you guys later. This is Polybrewski signing off.